Hey there, sports history fan. This is Ross Bliley, the host of the Pigskin Tales podcast. Are you looking for that perfect, unique gift for your sports-loving child or grandchild? Or maybe you're looking for one. Well, I got something very unique for you. It's a racket. It's the ultimate device for the ultimate fan. It's perfect for any time you need to make some noise. What it is, is a 7-inch compact megaphone. It's got 8 powerful adjustable LED lights, noisemakers. Plus, you can design it all you want to match your team's colors. So get on out there and let's get loud. Bring a racket to your next game or competition to cheer on your favorite team or athlete. To pick up your racket today, head to MyRacket.com. That's my r a k i t dot com. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. The Rose Bowl. The game that inspired the college football bowl season has a long and storied history. The stadium itself is 100 years old, and in celebration of it, Pigskin Dispatch is assembling some of the top historians and authors to share the memories, people, and events that make the granddaddy of them all the special game that it is. Enjoy this Rose Bowl memory from pigskindispatch.com. Hello, my football friends. This is Darren Hayes of pigskindispatch.com. Welcome to the Pig Pen, your portal to positive football history. And we are down to our final segments of Rose Bowl history, getting into these modern games. Uh, today, we're going to talk about the 2018 through the 2022 Rose Bowl classics that have been played in Pasadena and one elsewhere. So it's just some uh, great uh, football we'll talk about here, some great pieces of football history with some great and fantastic legendary players that are going to be remembered for a long, long time here. And uh, these are games that we should well remember because I'm sure most of us have watched these games and seen these players play, uh, at least on the television, if not in person. So the first game we're going to talk about today this is the 2018 Rose Bowl that cl- featured a classic matchup of Coach Lincoln Riley's Oklahoma Sooners and the Georgia Bulldogs, coached by Kirby Smart. Now, played on January 1st, 2018, this was the 104th edition of the Rose Bowl game, and it was a semifinal for the college football playoff that year. The world would witness the most points ever scored in one Rose Bowl game up to that point. And hang on to your hats as this giant game had the offenses going wild. Oklahoma won the toss and deferred their choice until the second half, forcing the Bulldogs uh, to a th- almost a three and out. They had, a, I think they got a first down in there, but they ended up punting the ball away and the Sooners offense trot on the field for their first series. And what a series it was. Oklahoma's quarterback, Heisman Trophy winner Baker Mayfield completed three passes, the third being placed into the waiting arms of receiver Marquise Brown into the end zone to put OU on the board. The Bulldogs would tie the game on the next quarter when Sony Michelle broke into the open and ran for a 75-yard touchdown at 7-all. And there were scores of plenty, mostly by the Sooners, as the first half melted away. The scoreboard was changing quickly. The Sooners ran a double reverse play, and Mayfield caught the first pass of his college career to score a touchdown from two yards out on a toss by wide receiver C.D. Lamb. Interesting play indeed. Now Georgia got the ball back with only six seconds remaining, just enough time for Rodrigo Blankenship to bang out a 55-yard field goal, setting a Rose Bowl record for the longest successful field goal in the history of the Rose Bowl game. Now, Oklahoma was lined up for a 31-17 lead at intermission. Now, after the half, Georgia played stout defense and pounded the rock with their big offensive line, starting to wear down those Sooners just a bit. It was a Sony Michelle 38-yard touchdown scamper, later followed by Nick Chubb, his teammate, scoring a 50-yarder of his own on the ground. And when they took the lead on Javon Wims' uh, four-yard touchdown toss from Mayfield. Now, the Sooners nodded the game at 38 after Dimitri Flowers caught an 11-yard touchdown reception from Baker Mayfield. 
the OU defense provided the next scoring spark when the Sooners retook the lead after a 46-yard scoop and score by Stephen Parker. UGA's tough running halfback Nick Chubb sent the game into overtime with a two-yard touchdown to tie the game once again. And the teams traded field goals in the first overtime session of the Rose Bowl. And it was the first Rose Bowl session in, in history of the game. This was a, you know, a new thing for the Rose Bowl. Well, the Bulldogs gained the advantage in the second overtime session when Lorenzo Carter blocked Austin Siebert's 27-yard field goal attempt. And then running back Sony Michelle provided the game-winning points when he escaped the tackles of a tired Sooner defense for a 27-yard touchdown run. That final score of the game was 54-48 Georgia in double overtime, sending the Bulldogs into the national championship game. And what a thrilling game that was. Now, Georgia overcame a 17-point deficit to win this game. It was the largest deficit to overcome in Rose Bowl history. It was also the fifth most viewed cable television program in the history of cable TV. Imagine that. Now the Bulldogs would lose to their arch rival Alabama 26 to 23 in a great national title game the following week. And uh, but what a great season they had, and what a great Rose Bowl both the Sooners and the Bulldogs provided for us. Now, the next year, it was the 105th Rose Bowl game. It featured the 9th-ranked Washington Huskies versus the 6th-ranked Ohio State Buckeyes. Chris Peterson held the head coaching duties at Washington, while Urban Meyer guided the Buckeyes from the sidelines. Ohio State struck first in a game when Paris Campbell accepted a 12-yard touchdown throw from quarterback Dwayne Haskins. The Huskies responded with a 38-yard field goal by Peyton Henry. The Buckeyes then rattled off 21 unanswered points on either side of the half, uh, a Johnny Dixon 19-yard scoring reception, Rashad Berry's one-yard touchdown catch, and J.K. Dobbins with a three-yard touchdown run. Washington rattled off three touchdowns of their own in a row, then later in the fourth quarter, and Drew Sample caught a two-yard touchdown from Miles Gaskin, and Gaskin ran in two more TDs on his own. However, it was not enough, as Ohio State hung on and won 28-23 to to win that 105th Rose Bowl. But we go on to the next year, two new teams coming in. It's the 2020 Rose Bowl. Head coach Mario Cristobal accepted the invite to the 105th Rose Bowl game as his number six Oregon Ducks traveled to Pasadena to face the number eight Wisconsin Badgers of coach Paul Christ. Now this was a great game. Wisconsin seemed to dominate the contest with total yards and time of possession, but trailed by one late. Unfortunately, the game came down to a very pivotal officiating call. The controversy arose from an offensive pass interference called against Wisconsin near the end of the game. The OPI nullified a Wisconsin first down and eventually gave the ball back to Oregon, who, you know, because Wisconsin could not convert on that series. Now, Oregon, who grabbed, got the ball back and ran the clock down and won the game. Later, on the air, the officiating expert Terry McCauley, former official, former NFL official, felt the call was incorrect on the field, and Oregon won the game by the slimmest of margins, 28 to 27, in another exciting Rose Bowl game. But wait, there's more. The 2021 college football playoff semifinal was played at the Rose Bowl game and was presented by Capital One. It was the 107th edition of the Rose Bowl game. It was played January 1st, 2021. This game was played during the COVID-19 pandemic and was the second time in Rose Bowl history that the game had to be moved away from the Pasadena area. Now, the first remote Rose Bowl occurred in 1942, just after the attack on Pearl Harbor, when it was displaced to North Carolina uh, for safety issues. We talked about that with Joe Ziemba just a, a few weeks ago. If you want to check that out, go back into the Rose Bowl annals, 1942 Rose Bowl, and take a look at that and listen. Uh, this time, uh, in 2021, it was because of the high infection rates in the Los Angeles area that were spreading across the country, and uh, they did not want to have a, a contest where they have that many people in a stadium watching a ball game. So they ended up having a very limited amount of people being able to go into the Arlington Stadium in Arlington, Texas, the AT&T Stadium where the Dallas Cowboys play. And the number four Notre Dame Fighting Irish would play in their second ever Rose Bowl. First one was 1925, remember, against the top-ranked Alabama Crimson Tide. 
Now, head coach Nick Saban had his team ready as they dominated the Irish of coach Brian Kelly. The Tide jumped out to a 21-7 lead by half, and Bama quarterback Mac Jones fired two touchdown strikes to highlight the first half scoring, two to Heisman winner Devontae Smith, and the other to Jaleel Billingsley. Now, Smith would score again in the second half to lead the Crimson Tide to a 31-14 victory to advance to the title game. In that national championship game, Alabama would roll over Ohio State 52-24 just 10 days later after the Rose Bowl game. And finally, we come to the 2022 Rose Bowl game. This is the 108th edition of the New Year's Bowl game. It was played on January 1st, 2022. Head coach Kyle Whittingham brought his number 11 Utah Utes into the fray against the Ohio State Buckeyes, ranked sixth in the nation and coached by Ryan Day. Utah got the party started when Britton Covey's 19-yard touchdown reception from quarterback Cameron Rising got the scoreboard's lights of flicker in there. Now the Utes struck again when Micah Bernard's 12-yard touchdown reception from Rising to make it a two-score game early for the Utes. Ohio State would cut into that lead in half as Marvin Harrison Jr.'s 25-yard touchdown reception from quarterback C.J. Stroud uh, got the Buckeyes rolling. And But Utah's Tavian Thomas answered with a touchdown run of six yards to, uh, again, make it a two-touchdown game. The teams traded body blows as Buckeye Jackson smith Nijba corralled a 50-yard touchdown pass from Stroud. And Utah scored almost immediately, but Brian Covey's returned and ensuing, the ensuing kickoff, 97 yards for a score, is still up by two touchdowns as the, are the Utah Utes. The Ohio State's Jackson Smith Nugent caught another touchdown pass, this one 52 yards from Stroud, and Utah completed the first half on a Cameron Rising 62-yard touchdown run to lead the game 35-21 to at the half. But the Buckeyes swarmed back in the second half. Marvin Harrison Jr.'s eight-yard touchdown reception from Stroud, and later a five-yarder would help them get back into this game. Teammate Jackson smith Nijba also got into this rally as he snagged a 30-yard touchdown play, pass play from C.J. Stroud to put OSU up by a touchdown. Utah's Dalton Kincaid recorded his name in the Rose Bowl annals by catching a 15-yard touchdown reception from Bryson Barnes to not to score at 45. However, with just nine seconds left, Ohio State found the game winner on a 19-yard field goal by kicker Noah Ruggles. Final score was Ohio State 48, Utah 45, and that is your Rose Bowl history. There are your first 108 games. We hope that you've been able to join us through these last uh, 39 or so days of uh, talking about Rose Bowl history. And we have had quite a bit of exciting stuff to talk about. Uh, If you have missed anything, you can go back into your favorite podcast provider under Pigskin Dispatch Podcast and look it up. Go to sportshistorynetwork.com or pigskindispatch.com and get to enjoy all the great Rose Bowl history with all of our great guests. We've talked about all these great Rose Bowls. And we're not done yet. We still have a couple more days. We're going to talk about the Rose Bowl and uh, just getting everybody ready for that big game on January 2nd between Utah and Penn State. Can't wait for that one. We're going to have another great game. Can't wait to talk about it and uh, when it becomes history. So till tomorrow, everybody, have a great Gridiron Day. Peeking up at the clock, the time's running down. We're going to go into victory formation, take a knee, and let this baby run out. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you back tomorrow for the next podcast. We invite you to check out our website, pigskindispatch.com, not only to see the daily football history, but to experience positive football with our many articles on the good people of the game, as well as our own football comic strip, Cleet Marks Comics. Pigskindispatch.com is also on social media outlets, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and don't forget the Pigskin Dispatch YouTube channel to get all of your positive football news and history. Special thanks to the talents of Mike and Gene Monroe, as well as Jason Neff for letting us use their music during our podcast. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. Hey there, sports history fan. This is Arnie Chapman, a.k.a. the Football History Dude. And I hope that you enjoyed this recent episode presented by the Sports History Network and we're able to learn some good old-fashioned sports history knowledge nuggets. I started the Sports History Network back in 2020 with the mission to help podcasters find a community of like-minded sports history nerds, as well as helping aspiring podcasters to start their own shows. We have a little bit over 30 shows on the network right now covering all sorts of sports history, 
But as far as I'm concerned, we're just at the toothpick in the ocean moment, you know, that can't even figure it out because there's so much more coming. We wanted to create the ultimate headquarters for sports gesture year, starting with Podcast Network and our website, but we're going to continue to move into other mediums as well. And here's the cool part, because we want you to be part of our team. So if you're interested in starting your own podcast, or maybe being a guest on one of our shows, or who knows, maybe even writing an article for us over on the website. Seriously, all you gotta do is reach out to us on the contact page over at sportshistorynetwork.com. You can be as technologically savvy as a Neanderthal tapping on a stone trying to figure out this whole hieroglyphics thing back in the day. Again, it doesn't matter, because even if you don't understand the whole podcast space, we have a production team that can pretty much help you out with doing everything. All you gotta do, head over to sports. HistoryNetwork.com, head to the contact page, fill it out. That message goes right to me, and I'll reach out to you as soon as I can. But for now, dude, I'm through if you're through.